it's possible that uh, people that accepted it um, possibly uh, people that sent emails and got an invitation possibly uh, didn't know that maybe it went to their junk mail or something like that um, and didn't see the invitation come from WebEx because it doesn't come from me or my name. Um, but we'll see. We're going to give them a few minutes. What'd you say? So we can get into the gangsterism of the Department of Justice rolling up the talking about, well, look, we want 14 billion. We know you only got six, and we know you only got 18, but we want 14. Right. We just give it a few more. There was at least 50 people that said they wanted, but I only sent the invitations to 25 simply because uh, that's all that this um, format will accommodate. It's an enterprise. Uh, it's what I use for work, uh, but again, it accommodates 25. Um, so um, I sent it to 25 people. So there were, in fact, 25 invitations sent out. Um, if if 25 people don't join, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make openly available the link, and anybody who can figure out how to log themselves in will be welcome to join until we get to the number of 25. I'm going to lose friends over that right there. Watch what I have. <laughs> All kinds of Marlin farmers, you know. Um, <laughs> one second. Just type in a quick message. reluctant to start yet simply because there's like, whoa, I mean, that's not even 10 people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight people. Like 50 people said they wanted to be involved. So I'm reluctant to go forward. Um, so we'll give it a second. Just give it, you know, a few more minutes. Somebody had a question? Uh, we can. We we yeah. Okay, we'll see. And the ten number I was for two um, comments in two different sets. Mm -hmm. If you only get like 50, I just did.
All right, well, so I'm not going to wait no more, um, or it will spill into everyone's night. I'm rather uh, time respectful and sensitive. So, um, peace, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know who I am. Um, and, and what I'm going to do here, what the focus here is, um, is to try to get you kind of acclimated and ready to be able to make moves in this market as soon as possible. Um, come November 4th. Right. Come no, come the time of the election. It doesn't matter. I don't care who they vote in the office. It doesn't make a difference. Right. Come that day, 26 states, I think it is, um, are have on the ballot the legalization of marijuana. OK. Why is that giant? OK. That's gigantic because um, suddenly you're going to have a lot of these small companies that have been in the trenches and have been in existence and that have been very affordable stocks. Right now we're talking about 12 cents a share. They're very affordable stocks. Well, come November, this is going to be the kind of money that buys islands. This is going to be the kind of money that um, is, is, oh my goodness, you, you can't imagine. Okay, I'm going to show you some things as we go along the night. You'll really kind of get an appreciation for it. Okay. At the end of this, my hope is not only do you know how to look up a stock symbol, right? Kind of research that company and find out what's going on with them in the news, what's happened the last year, the last five years, right? Kind of understand where they're positioned and what they're doing. Not only that, look at pretty much whatever client you see, uh, whatever client, uh, so whether that be Scott Trade, when I say client, I mean the interface. So if that's Scott Trade, or if that's uh, Share Builder, or whatever it is um, that you use, E-Trade, right? Whatever it is that you use to get to the stock market, it's the same market. It happens in real time, right? The only difference is how much they charge you per transaction and these kinds of things. But you're always looking at the same market. Now, understand, you have millions of people today that go into work Monday morning, and their only job is to squeeze from that market millions and millions of dollars for their clients. That's what they do. They're looking at the same data. They're looking at the same statistics. They've got the same public information that you have available to you, and that is all they do. Let me tell you something. In those positions, they're making high, look, they're making half a million dollar salaries, right? In those positions, in those positions, it is not guesswork. You do not sit in that chair for 30 days and not generate those millions upon millions of dollars for your clients and think that you have a job to go back to. It's not like that. It's highly competitive. So you've got, like I said, millions of people that are going to work every day, and this is what they do. They squeeze this market. They use the trends. They research, and they make um, intelligent purchases. Okay? So, um, we know what it is. We know what the stock market is. The fact is that my father, my father didn't play with the stock market. Neither did my mother. You know, they didn't know anything about it. Um, money was, you know, so my father was growing up in the, in the war in, in the wild 20s and 30s in Harlem, you know. He didn't, I mean, he knew about the lottery. He didn't know about the stock market. Well, this is the exact same thing, really. Um, the lottery and the stock market parallel them, uh, each other in, in many different ways. Um, and, and in many different ways, understand that what you're doing is gambling. The stock market is gambling. You, there's no way of predicting. Even with me telling you that this marijuana is about to take off, there's no way of predicting that it will, in fact. There's no way of predicting which companies will take off and which ones will not. The only thing that you can do is rely on the research, rely on trends, look at the news, figure out what it is um, that this company is going to do. Okay? So... What I want to do here is go ahead and introduce you to the product. So the, what I use is, uh, and I got a handout I'm going to make available to you at the end. That way you've got some definitions. Um, you'll have something that you'll be able to refer to as you go ahead and make your trades. Okay? So I use 
um, Capital One Investing, that's Share Builder, right? The reason I use that is because it's almost free. E-Trade, you got to give them $500, and they hold that, and then you put in more money to make your trade, okay? E uh, Capital One is free. You can go and sign up for this right now. You need a bank account, a checking account, okay? They're going to attach to your – I'm sorry, they're not going to attach – you're going to give them your checking account. You're going to tell them how much money you want to put in the market. Now, when you put that money in the market, it's yours. It's your account, just like you were logging into your bank, right? That's your money. You've not spent any yet. You've not bought anything. You haven't bought any stock or, or own anything yet, okay? Um, what you're doing is you're putting it on the table so that you're able to play the game should you choose to, okay? So uh, what I did, my foray into the market, I, um, I threw 50 bucks in there, right? And I'm going to tell you, I did not do anything with my $50 for like a year. I watched trends. I, um, I kind of I made like gambling bets with myself relative to, you know, what I thought this stock might do. And I would write that down and I would track it and, and validate whether or not I was correct, right? Whether or not I was accurate in relation to, you know, kind of what I thought was going to happen. So um, I did that for a while, okay? And then after that, I started kind of knowing how to look at these stocks, knowing how to research, and, and that, that was it. That was it. Because the truth is, um, as, as life has always gone on, my brother and I, um, so we're in technology, we've always known what was going to be the next hottest um, area. Right now, security is the biggest area. You see the threat to the Internet that happened? Amazon, Netflix, you saw everybody go down? Security stocks, okay? Um, and I'm going to share. I, I don't know how to do this, but I, I'm going to share something with y'all that yeah, I shouldn't share. I can't. I'm not supposed to be able to share, but I, I will try to somehow. Um, so um, the truth is that the uh, security stocks in technology are going to be huge. But absolutely, come November 4th, the marijuana stocks are going to go through the roof. Okay? They're going to go through the roof. So let's get logged in. Again, go to, um, go to Share Builder which is what I use, or it is CapitalOneInvesting.com. And you can go in and create a new account here. Again, they're going to use your bank information, and you'll, find, you'll send some amount. There is no minimum. You can send $5. You can send $50. It doesn't matter. Okay? And what we're going to look at tonight is penny stocks, okay? which is a volatile place. When we say penny stocks, you think that means – Oh, we're not really talking about any money, but we're going to really, we're going to dig into that, okay? So, uh, I'm going to get signed into my account, okay? Now, I say my account, but the truth is that this is, I started a, um, a group called ASE, okay? And that's African Stock Exchange. That money was actually $200, $300 that was donated by six people in uh, in the beginning of ASE, and that was about us kind of getting together, studying the stock market, learning it individually, and um, pooling small amounts of money together, and, and doing something in the market, right? Choosing as a, a group or as a body what we should invest in or what we shouldn't, win, lose, draw, all together. Um, and so this money that you see here is that, um, that capital, okay? So... First thing first, um, you see an overview, okay? You'll, and this will show you my different, the various accounts that I have in this area. I can adjust my profile and settings. This is irrelevant stuff, the way it looks and feels. But again, maybe you want to do so, so that you can see your alerts and see different things on your uh, dashboard when you come in. So you'll, as you go along, you'll definitely customize the dashboard. It's not what I want to focus on this evening, okay? Message center, if they got any messages for you, they're not going to have none. Ah, bear in mind, you can do three trades a week. You can do three trades a week, okay? Um, if you, if you, 
um, do more than that first time they're going to contact you and they're going to say, um, yeah, could you please, uh, you, you have to know that you're not a, um, a day trader, you're not a registered day trader, and this is the, ma the maximum amount of trades you can make a week. Please don't breach this, okay? The next time, they'll cut your account off, and that means you can't go to anywhere, anywhere in the world and be able to trade on the stock exchange. So um, you want to be careful. You want to limit to three trades a week, and you want to make sure that your trades are smart ones. Okay. Uh, give me one second. I want to uh, shoot this URL off. Um, okay. Uh, and I just want to drop it on Facebook as well. Okay. All right. So, um, portfolio. We're looking at my account and kind of what uh, I have where. Um, it will speak to the pre performance of my picks and what I've done um, relative to stocks. I've done pretty good. Um, there is one particular stock which I just recently sold. It was a great performer. Um, I recently sold it in order to pick up more MJNA. Okay, um, but so what we see on screen is the, my positions, what I'm holding, what I own, right? Okay, so I own Hemp, Hemp Inc. It's a company in North Carolina. Okay, the current valuation is four oh uh, point four one nine, so that's about four cents. Right. The amount of change that occurred in today's value of that stock was minus 791. It lost minus 7% of its value. Okay. The quantity that I own is 899 shares. The market value of those 899 shares is $37. Okay. The cost per share was 18. I think I bought at 18. Okay, that was, uh, and I bought this two years ago, maybe. Okay. Um, and so uh, it's $166 total value. And from where I purchased it, I'm down $128.40. Okay, you see that? Or I lost. 77.32% on that hemp stock. Okay, everybody sees that? All right. On the medical marijuana, um, a quote today is going to be about 12 cents. Right? Almost 12 and a half. So, the change today in the marijuana stock was 10.81%. Okay. 10.81%. I need everybody to mute their microphone. Um, ask me a question. Uh, when you when you need to ask a question, you can unmute and go ahead and ask it. But mute your microphone. Okay. Um, so the percentage of change today yeah, in man. its value. Okay, was ten. Who's that? Ten point eight one percent. Right. The quantity. That's the quantity that I own. That's the quantity of the medical marijuana that I own. Okay. Current market value is seven hundred and fourteen dollars. Who's that? I gotta have you mute. I got you. All right. Current value, $714. The cost per share, I bought it at $0.11 cents per share. Okay. And so I'm up about $63 or about 9.79%. 9% of what I paid, I'm up based on this current valuation. Right? Okay. So... Um, 
I'm going to click in. Did you see that? I clicked into the MJNA. And, and I'm going to back out a little bit. I'm going to show you how to search for stocks. Um, but what I'm going to do is, because I love this, this is a really good stock to look at. And it will give you an idea as to kind of the way that I think um, and look at stocks um, based on what I think it's going to do into the future. Right? Okay. So I clicked into MJNA. And what this is giving me is a three-day view in. Right? What's it been doing in the last three days? Okay? So we see three days ago, it was at an eight cent mark. It was eight cents. Okay. In three days, it went up to 12 cents. That's good action, right? Which is a 40.91% increase on the value of that stock. Okay. So what does that mean? If I bought it three days ago at eight cents and I spent $100, right? If I spend $100, by the end of those three days, I would have had $140.91, right? In that three-day period, my money would have gone from $100 to $140.91, okay? And um, have I ever bought any of the stock that, that um, share builder suggested? No. What I will do is, I will look at the analysts ratings. I'm going to get I'm going to get to these to these areas here. Um I will look at the analyst ratings. I don't use them. I the, the only reason that I use them as a barometer because they are super greedy. We know a lot about them. And the way that this stock market works is really all about their comfort, okay? Re, and and you got to get to this. It's a pathology it's their comfort. When they get uncomfortable about war with Russia, when they get uncomfortable about China, when they get uncomfortable about these different things, there are market fluctuations. Things happen. People stop spending or they start spending. Okay? Um, Warren Buffett said, buy when everybody is selling and sell when everybody is buying. Right? So when everybody is freaking out and they're dumping their stock, that's the time to buy. Okay? When they're, when they're selling... That's when you should be buying. Okay? And when they're buying, that's where you should be selling. Right? So, no, I don't really listen to the analysts. I do my own diligence. What? Nobody can hear me? Uh, no, everyone else can hear me. Kev? Oh, well, so if I say it, you won't be, here. You won't be able to... Um, Kev, did you get sound? No, not yet. Okay, it's working. Um, select. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Who's that? I gotta have you meet. <laughs> Um, you, to, uh, you and there we go. All right. So we look at medical marijuana. Um, and so in a three-day period, we see a 40.91% gain. So that means, again, if I put $100 in there three days ago, today that $100 turned into $140. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to pan out. See this three-day? I can click this, and I can go back five days, okay? So in five days, there's been a 55% increase on this stock, right? That's a handsome ransom. I'm going to go back again. One month. One month, we're at 136%, okay? One month, 136% growth on that stock. Again, so now if we look at that again, look at the value of that. Look at what that value is. That's five cents. Okay, three months ago, it was five cents. Today, we're at 206% the value of that stock, right? Go back six months, 217, go back a year, 324. Okay. 
uh, what was that? People can be irrational longer than you can remain solvent. That said, perception of a stock's performance can be manipulated due to propaganda that has nothing to do with the stock. That is absolutely correct. Um, uh, can everybody hear? It doesn't, let me see. Uh, no, it doesn't look like Tamara can hear. Kev, it looks like you're on. I see you're on the telephone. Uh, looks like everybody else can hear. Okay. So, yep. um, so looking back at this stock, right? I'm looking back a year, right? Now, I bought it over a year ago, uh, two years ago. So in that time, I've done 335% uh, value from what I bought it. I bought it at pennies. So again, today, don't get your decimal points. This is 12 cents today. This stock is, is valued at 12 cents. Okay, you can buy this at 12 cents. So if you wanted to buy this, okay, if you wanted to buy this, you saw this stock and you said, okay, you know what, I want this, and you're in share builder. Uh, you can go right here to this yellow button and hit trade, okay? You can hit trade. When you hit trade, do I got any money? I got $13 to invest. <laughs> when you hit trade, oh, no, I'm not going to do that because it's a $6 transaction fee because of the stock. So this stock is valued under a dollar, and so it's called a penny stock, right? Um, the, they attach a transaction fee to it because it's, it's um, volatile. It could go up, it could go down really, really fast, right? So they want to make something on the top. So they charge you a different fee. So, but I'll come in and I'll say, I want to buy, okay? And there's the symbol locked in, okay? Or I could do a fine symbol and look one up. Um, and I'll do a share calculator. And it will tell me how many shares I can buy. I can buy 48 shares with $13. Okay, and I can add that to the order. Okay. Now, I know based on the fact, based on the value of this uh, stock, that it's a penny stock, I need to go to do a limit option. We need to do a limit option. I can't do market. I've got to do a limit. If we look in the explain these choices, a market order lets you buy or sell the security to the prevailing market price. When you place an order during normal market hours, a um, uh, market order typically executes within seconds. It's an instant um, transaction. A limit order allows you to specify the maximum amount you are willing to pay for a security or a range, right? How much are you willing to pay for that, okay? So by, by limit orders, let's say you wanted to buy a stock for $10 or less. You can enter a limit price of $10 and will only purchase the security if it trades at $10 or less. So when I come in and I do a limit order, right, when I've got to do a limit order, I'm looking at the current price. And I do a limit, I'm going to say, well, the limit that I'm going to go for is right there. I don't want to go $1 higher than that. That's all I'm looking for, right? I'm not looking to pay $1 higher, and I'm going to do that with all of those shares. Um, oh, that's not a value. One second. Okay. And so, uh, what's, uh, order expiration, order expiration, expire the end of the day or good until canceled. I generally will do a good until canceled, okay, uh, because I want my shares. I want that stock that I just purchased. Um, and so I can select to review this order, right? And uh, again, look, the stock, uh, in, the stock in this order is low price security, which may have low volume and a wide big bid-ask spread. These conditions may limit your ability to trade these shares at your preferred price. Um, the low price security surcharge will apply on orders that execute below $1 per share, and the surcharge may vary between the buy and sell transaction. Okay, so basically what they're saying is the swing on this is so great, right, 
this could swing up really, really high, or it could drop out and you don't have anything left, right? Um, and so what happens then, okay? If the shares drop down to zero, right, they have X amount of time before they, for, uh, to bring the relative value back up before they get delisted, okay? When they get delisted, you got nothing, right? Um, but, and the stocks can soar, and if they soar, you can sell these at any given time, and you can put, these, put this money back into your bank account at any given time. It's cash money, okay? So I can make this purchase, right? Good until canceled. It's a limit order. Um, and this would be added to my total um, performance um, matrix, okay? Any questions so far? I went a little, you know, I kind of just jumped right into marijuana. I want to um, show you a little bit of, um, a little bit more about, you know, kind of how to look at that. Okay, so I'll jump back into marijuana. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring you the one that I sold and show you something pretty amazing. This company that I sold, NHTC, National Health Trends Corp., and I strongly suggest if anybody's got money, um, m my money is on the big horse right now, which is marijuana. Okay, that's going to, um, that's going to do some pretty amazing things in a short period of time, pretty much uh, beyond anything else. Okay. But this company, NHTC, I bought this at $18 a share uh, during an IPO, and I'll show you what an IPO is. Um, I bought it at $18 a share, um, and what what happened was this company's been around for a while, uh, and at one point, at one point, I owned it at this point. I probably should have sold it at that high point. You see that high point? where it's above $40, it's about $50 per share. Well, I owned it during that peak, and I probably should have sold it. I would have had a better yield. I sold it somewhere around $24, right? I still made a fairly good profit. It's not what I really would have wanted. I stayed too long at the fair. But note, if you will, in the course of, so I'm looking at a five-year projection, right? And so we look at this. That is half of 2013, 14, 15, 16. So in the course of three and a half years, these this grew 4,513%. 4, 4,513%. 4, so you went into this and you put pennies. You put pennies, and it increased. If you had, if you put ten dollars in that, and it increased four thousand percent, how much money is that? Right. Okay. So, um, uh, what do you look at? Okay. Well, I scroll down. I look at NHTC. Um, I got this from a tip. I listen to people, um, and and I kind of use my own experience. What's going on in the market? What's going on? You know, like that. Um, but you look down here at the kind of what they're saying on the street, and you see that the analysts are all saying buy this stock. I can tell you very clearly, this is a great stock. Um, it's not a short-term game. Um, it's not a short-term game. It is a long-term. This is not going to, you know, uh, it'll take time, but it will be a player. Okay? It will forever be a player. So. Um, I dumped it because I wanted more money in the marijuana right now. That's a short-term gain. That's going to pay me dividends. Now, I will never sell all of my marijuana stock, ever. Why would I? It's going to increase in value. You don't um, – so the way that they do it is they do not take that money out and use it to live on. No. They take a piece of that out, drop it into an account, live on the interest, Right? Or make make um, make business deals based on the interest, or take loans on it. They don't take that money. They leave that capital there, okay? And they take loans against it. They talk about it. They don't actually spend it, okay? Um, so uh, there's other things that you look at. I love um, 
Uh, yes, so I did kind of briefly cover how to how to get started. This site is CapitalOneInvesting.com. Uh, it was ShareBuilder. Um, the reason I like it, it was free to start up. However, I will say Scott Trade has. So did you all see when I made that purchase? It had six ninety five um, because of the low the low valuation. Well, Scott Trade doesn't charge you that. Okay. So if you're doing a penny trade stock, right, a uh, penny stock trade, Scott Trade, Scott Trade does not charge you that six ninety five. You can get that um, transaction for free. So that is a better client, most likely. That's a better idea. Um, uh, I stuck with this again simply because I uh, put money in it. I was buying from here, um, and it, I made videos based on it. It is a very low startup. As I said, you can put five dollars in, you can put ten dollars in, and you can play with that. Okay. Now, a little something about these penny stocks. Okay. Um, when we say penny stocks, it doesn't necessarily have to be under a dollar to qualify as a penny stock. A penny stock is anything that is in between zero and uh, ten dollars. Okay. Now, understand something. This is the place where there is the most potential for loss or gain, okay? Understand, this is the place where there's the greatest potential for loss or gain because if you've got $10 um, shares, right? $10 shares and you spend $1,000, okay? And you got 100 of these $10 shares. If that goes up 50%, right, to $15, guess what you just did? You've got $1,500. But if it goes down, it, if it goes down to 5%, guess what you just did? You lost $500. So you have the biggest potential for swing, uh, for loss and gain. When you buy a stock that, you know, so what's Tesla today? Let's look at Tesla. Okay. And you can just type in the name of the company and it'll, the stock symbol will be populated. So let's look at Tesla today. Tesla is $202. I was about to say $202. I didn't look at them in a while. But um, so Tesla is $202. Guess what? If you buy Tesla stock, right, look at how much, it, how much it's up, 0.62, right? Let's look at a month. It's down 3.3%, six months, 19.58%. How much could you potentially gain in purchasing this stock. Look over a year, it's down 6%. So even if it fluctuates in your favor, what are you going to gain? You're going to gain 0.5%. You're going to gain 0.2%. So it's a small margin that you're potentially going to gain when you're playing with these big numbers, right? So the stock market, the real player out here is not the one that's going out here buying $202 stocks. That's not the player. The real player is the one that's playing with those penny stocks because, again, it has the greatest potential to reward or punish you. You understand? Now, don't put anything into the stock market that you cannot afford to lose. If you can't afford to lose it, don't put it in there. Okay? It is a gamble. Even though, I'm, you know, again, so uh, we'll look at a can of girl. Even though... Um, we know that 20, 23 states, 26 states, all have um, legislation that's coming up in November where people are going to vote, even though we know overwhelmingly 70% in almost all of these states are voting positively for the marijuana. Even though these things are in place, even though I've watched these companies for years and I kind of know that there's no guarantee. There is no guarantee. It is a best guess. It is a best estimate, but I'm going to say to you, again, there's a million people that go to work every Monday morning, and they go and they sit in front of these same computers that we're sitting in front of right now, and when they sit down, they squeeze from the same public information that is available to you hundreds of millions of dollars for their clients, and if they were to miss that quota for 30 days, they would be fired. They're in one of the most competitive places that you could ever imagine. And if they didn't squeeze that kind of money out of the market, 
for 30 days, they would be fired. Forget 30 days, seven days. You're not sitting in that chair and not performing, right? So they're performing for their customers and getting them millions of dollars. In addition to getting them millions of dollars, they're making enough to be able to pay their salary plus pay for the yacht for the, for the manager and the managing partners and the rest, right? That's the kind of money that's in this market. That's what's in this market. It's enough to feed these greedy, fat bastards, right? And they're being fed well. Um, they, they, the software, all the software does, look, all the software does is give you different insights. If you, so I'm going to go through this. If you um, use the tools in front of you, you've got everything that they've got, truthfully. Everything that they have available to them, you have available to you. And I will say that this uh, share builder is a really helpful site. Look, if you will, at the far end, education. Okay? So you can come into this education. If you wanted to know something, you, they've got this broken down and you can learn everything that you need. They've made it very, very easy. They've got guidance that you can get and get some advice as it relates to sharing. Again, the thing is, right, they're going to talk to you in a whole different language. I prefer to have this conversation amongst ourselves, you understand, because I'm going to speak to you in a whole different way. I, look, I'm, I'm showing you the penny. This is where we eat. And um, what is it? I'm not a religious man, but it says, despise ye not the day of humble beginnings. Pennies make dollars, you understand? And if it don't make dollars, then what? It don't make sense. So um, let's take a quick little journey through um, a stock of a various um, offerings. So let's look at hemp, right? Hemp didn't perform for me very well. Okay. So let's look at hemp. First thing, the last price, that was the closing price at 430 this afternoon. Okay. Don't forget your decimal points. That's four cents. Four cents. Now, let me tell you something. Hemp Inc. has got a facility in North Carolina. They're the first ones to get the license to be able to grow hemp there for the first time in 100 years. They built a $20 million facility out in uh, 70,000 square feet. Um, and they're about to do big, big things. Okay? So I'm not letting go of hemp. In fact, I will end up probably putting more into it. Okay? Volume, say, what is volume? Okay, you see this value here? Volume is the number of shares or contracts traded in a security or an entire market during a given period of time. For every buyer, there's a seller, and each transaction contributes to the total count of total volume. That is, when buyers and sellers agree to make a transaction at a certain price, it's considered one transaction. If only five transactions occur in a day, the volume for the day is five. The volume for the day is five. So what does this tell you? What does that value tell you? Volume is one of the most important measures of strength for traders and technical analysts. Simply put, Volume refers to the number of contracts traded. For any trade to occur, the market needs to produce a buyer and a seller. A transaction occurs when buyers and sellers meet and is referred to as the market price. From an auction perspective, when buyers and sellers become partially active, at a, uh, particularly active at a certain price, it means there's a lot of volume. So what does this mean? This means there's a lot of people buying and selling this right now. There's a lot of people that are moving this product right now, right? People are looking at that, okay? Hey, Peter. So, yes. I'm sorry. Can I jump in really quick? I just have a question for you. Sure. So I have the hemp from when you first put it out there to purchase it. Now, mm -hmm. would it be wise to buy an additional 1,000 shares at this point? I absolutely would. And the reason that I say that is because the hemp, this, and, and, and so let's look at this, right? Let's look at that. That's a great question. Okay. Right now, we looked at the analyst on the MJNA. Okay. And you saw, oh, I'm sorry, the analyst on MJNA didn't say buy. They're not saying buy. They are staying away from these because, again, they're penny stocks. 
they're volatile, and they're not making any determinations, right? They're not going one way or another. But they have to pop. It's going to happen, right? So you can look at the news relative to hemp, but um, what you're looking at here is all financial news. So let's look at something else. Let's look at what this company is doing as an organization, okay? Um, and you start to see that they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on this facility over there in North Carolina. Um, they are, they've engaged in all kinds of campaigns. They've got games out there on Facebook. They are standing in line waiting for this thing to happen. The products that they plan to, pr to bring to market are um, relative to industrial cleanup, right? Cleaning up oil and gas drilling. Hemp can clean up uranium. It's one of the things that they use over at Fukushima. It's one of the things they use at nuclear dump sites. It cleans up the environment, right? So um, they are in different areas that I promise you, I promise you, boo-boo, these things are not going anywhere. So hemp, for my money, I'm absolutely, and hey, um, uh, I, as, I, as you saw, when we looked at the hemp, I lost money on this, right? We look on this, uh, let me look, let's go back to my um, position, and this is the thing I need you all to understand. I lost 77% of the value on this stock, right? That's $128 I lost total. I've had it for, like I said, I've had it for two years, right? Two and a half years, something like that. I lost $128. Guess what? I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. In order to play this game, you've got to risk something. And the truth is that when this thing pops, it's going to leap from being a penny stock to being a Tesla stock, $200. Now, guess what? When you've got 899 shares of that, and it goes to $200 a share, you ain't working no more, right? You're not working for nobody no more. You're buying yachts. You're in the Philippines, right? That's what you're doing, okay? So your question, would you buy a 1,000 more? I absolutely would. I absolutely would. Now, again, this is a game for um, you've got to have um, nerves. You've got to have nerves. Step away from the machine. When you first but make your purchases, I promise you, you all will be looking at these real-time tickers and watching what's going on with your stocks. There's no way you won't, right? And I got to tell you, I do too. I do too. I sit and I watch. But this is exciting, right? I'm watching this over the last five days just climb and climb, and I'm watching that 55%, and I'm watching my money go up. Right? I'm watching my money go up, and I love that. that that's fun. Um, but what you don't want to do is sit here and, and watch this thing, and when you see this go down, look, you'll see jitters. Let me show you something. You'll see jitters. You'll see things happen. Look at it. It went from here, and I owned it at this point. It went from here and plummeted in a day. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's not a day. That's not a day. Um, but I've watched it plummet in a day where you're like, oh, my God, there goes my money, right? Um, and you can't jump out. If you did your research, if you believe that that is a val uh, valuable stock and it will be into the future, you have to have nerves of steel. Let it go. Let it go. You've got to have a plan. Now, you also need to have a target. With NHTC, I lost money on it because I didn't have a target. You know what happened to me? You know how to get you in the lottery, I mean, in the uh, casino? You, you hear all them lights and the ding, ding, ding and all that, right? Um, you can't see the outside and the drinks are plentiful, right? All that's happening. Um, and so while that's going down, you ain't really paying attention. Well, that's the same thing that happened here. Uh, and I was watching NHTC skyrocket. I got to the point where it was 300%. Um, it got to, I'm saying, it got to like 40, 50 bucks. Um, I watched it skyrocket. So, and I had paid. 18. So when it hit 36, that was my money double right there. Um, and so, but I wanted to see how far it could go and the market downturn. And so now I got out with, you know, again, I made a modest profit on that, but it's not what it could have been. So what you have to do is you have to set a cap. 
What is it that you're looking to make? What is it that you're looking for off of this? So if it's not something that you are invested in, not something that you think, you know what, I'm going to keep this stock, I'm going to have this forever, right? If it's not that, right, then you need to have a, um, a, a top and a bottom, a top and a bottom. Where is the, what's the amount that you want to make from this, right? And what's the amount that you want to lose from this? set a top and a bottom so that you can get out when it makes the most sense for you, okay? Um, so volume, did everybody understand that? That's movement. That's how much this is moving, 37.3 million, okay? 37.3 million transactions are happening on the marijuana stock today. Whew. I'm telling you. Busy. That is very busy, isn't it? Um, okay. Market cap or market capitalization. It refers to the total dollar market value of a company's outstanding shares. It's commonly referred to as market cap, and it's calculated by multiplying a company's shares outstanding by the current market price of one share. Okay. The investment community uses it to determine a company's size. As opposed to looking at financial statements or its sales, they're looking at this um, measure to um, evaluate the size. Okay? So using market capitalization to show the size of a company is important because company size is a basic determinant of various characteristics in which investors are interested. Is it solvent? Is there risk? Right? It's also easy to calculate. A company with 20 million shares selling at $100 a share would have a market cap of $2 billion. Okay? A company with 20 million shares selling at $100 a share would have a market cap of $2 billion. Okay? Everybody good? Okay. So, what we've been talking about is, uh, is uh, stocks, okay? There's another kind of trading that you can do, and it's lucrative. And, and again, it's something that I need to um, get a little bit more involved with, and that's options. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because that's not what we're talking about. My focus really here today is kind of the marijuana, okay? There's going to be other things as you start to do your research and, and start to figure out how to research, um, uh, so, Kev asked, why not sell a quarter uh, or half of your shares or half when your shares double? Well, you can do that. You can do that. Um, I, I would err on the side of trying to sell less um, than, than more, especially in the case of like a marijuana. Um, so, again, imagine this. Imagine this, right? Imagine each of you on this call goes out and you buy this marijuana stock, okay? And by Friday, it goes from $0.10 cents to $10, okay? It leaps up to $10. I mean, what, how much, what kind of a, um, increase is that? That's almost a $10,000, a 10,000% increase, am I right? Is my math? If it went from $0.10 cents to $10, that's almost a ten thousand percent increase in a day, right? Okay. So you just got rich. Okay. You just got rich. The truth is, it went to ten dollars, and it's going to go further. Okay. It's going to go further. If you dump it now at ten dollars, when it hits seventy nine dollars, you're gonna be kicking yourself. You could be kicking yourself, right? So if you have to, and again, it's going to be based on your own personal belief. How much, um, how far do you think marijuana is going to go? Well, I can tell you, some of the people in the room seen me in high school. <laughs> I can, marijuana ain't going nowhere, right? So um, with that in mind, it's really a matter of your comfort zone. What do you think this stock is going to do, right? What do you think it's going to do, right? Um, 
And in, in the case of the marijuana, in the case of health food trends, in the case of um, green technologies, in the case of um, software security, these are firm markets. They're not going anywhere. Okay? They're not going anywhere. They're, they're going to be here. A year from now, people will make money on them. And again, who are the ones you want to make money on? You're going to make money on these penny stocks. Okay? Okay? So, um, so Kev, maybe sell a quarter of them stocks? Maybe. I, I'm, I'm really going to try to leave that there. So, again, when I put money into the market, right, this is money that I can afford to lose. Right? I didn't put nothing into the market that I needed. Right? So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and let the market do what it do. Because let me tell you something. What happens is oftentimes um, companies get caught up, and, and everybody in the market gets caught up in fluctuations that are not their fault. It's simply that something happened. Uh, again, this is based on the whims of these folk. So um, something happens in China. Somebody fires a ship, um, fires at a ship coming out of North Korea, and the market takes a downturn. It's not the fault of the company that their stocks went down. Oh, and let me show you something. It's not the fault of the company that their stocks went down, but they went down nonetheless. The reality is when the market normalizes, which it will, it was an, it was an unnatural downturn, when it normalizes, somebody's going to get really rich. Okay? Somebody has the opportunity to get really rich. I'm going to show you a website. Okay? And this is, uh, and maybe I'll put together a document and add you uh, and give these to you. I'm definitely going to, I created a document uh, here. Um, and and I will distribute this and make this available to you so that you've got this information that you can refer to, okay? Um, I'm going to complete it. Uh, there's just, uh, you know, some, some other things that, um, that I want to add to it so that you've got it. Shouldn't you buy in a downturn where there was panic? That's a great question, Kev. So the truth is there's always a downturn. Look at this site that I'm on right now. Uh, NASDAQ market, an unusual volume, unusual volume. So what this is showing us is um, this is stocks that are unusually high. They're trading high for some reason today, right? And that's awesome, right? We see Lakeland there at 1380. They went up 4.55%. Uh, 4 that's significant, okay? So we see some, some things that are moving, 17.30% Logitech. They've got the headphones that you all are wearing, right? 10% um, here, 14, 11%. So we see some people that are moving. Uh, Strayer Education, 15.0%. Education is big. Mercury Systems, 12.93%. So we see that these companies have moved. Look at the stock values, 25.22. How many of those can you buy? How many of those can I buy, right? Um, this one's $49.25. So we look at some of these and we're like, okay, fine. Um, maybe I could buy some, but if they experience a 15.8% increase today, is it likely? So what I'll do is I'll click into that, okay? And what I want to do is I want to look at its chart over, uh, oops, move, come on with the ads. I want to look at its chart over the period of, over the course of a, a year, right? Um, so that I can see a 12 month chart and I can kind of see what it's done, what its history has been, okay? So I can look at that two year chart, right? So this will tell me Kind of, and let me bring this back over into let me bring this back over into Share Builder, so that I can show you the kind of the um, the view that I'm used to. Um, so 
unusual movement, right? Unusual movement. It went from 4750 up to 5250. So let's look back over three months. What's going on? Whoa. Yeah, look at that, right? Look at that. 45 up to 52. What happened? Okay. So let's look in the news. In the news, 12 biggest midday gainers for Wednesday. This is just today's news. Um, Strayer Education, EPS, uh, 0.25 versus a 0.22 estimated revenue. Okay, so they met their target, right? They estimated 22. They came in at uh, 25. So they're, they're pretty close to their target um, relative to what they thought they were going to, to make. Um, their third quarter revenues. Um, their earnings report. So there's been nothing in the market. There's nothing in the news that should have done this. Why did they jump like that? Why did they leap up like that? Those are the things we can't know. But what we can say is it's probably unsustainable. It's probably just a market jitter. If you bought it at that 47 and you were able to capitalize that 52, it probably makes some sense to get the hell out now at that 52 mark. Don't be greedy. Dump it at 52. Because if you look back at this in a week, it's probably going to normalize back down to that $45 mark, right? So when we look at this area that I was at, right, when we look at – um unusual volume, the most valuable information here is not what's up on unusual volume, it's what's down. It's what's down. Why? Because that means a stock that you might not normally be able to get has become more affordable, right? It's dropped down. So you dig back in just the same way that we looked um, that we looked at the the one that was going up on unusual trade. We're going to do the exact same thing on those that are going down, right? Why are they going down? Did something happen with the company, right? Um, is there is there a problem with the company, or was it simply just um, market jitters? Right. So ABAX. Let's take a look at that. ABAX. So what happened to them? Okay. Look at that. Eleven point sixteen percent of its share value dropped out in five days. Look at that. So let's look at that. That's pretty consistent uh, along that uh, fifty-two, fifty-three, or fifty-three dollar uh, mark, right? Look at the six months. Whoa, they're pretty volatile. That's a volatile stock, isn't it? Um, let's go back and look at a year. Yeah, so that's a hard one to call, right? Look at over a year's point, 8.9 per six, nine per six, uh, 8 9 up. This is not a good performer. You're not going to get a margin on that. You're not going to make the kind of money on that, that that makes it worth your time. You'll have your money tied in this, hoping that this thing jumps up or down. Um, so this, in my estimation, is not an anomaly. This is just status quo for this particular stock. Okay, it goes up, it goes down. In this case, what that means is, if you were to if you were to um, hit one of these now. Now, here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. What we can say without any ambiguity here is that this is an abnormal low. In the last six months, okay, they hit that low one time. It took them a little bit of time to rebound, but it went from $47 to $50, giving you three, right? Giving you three on top. Um, so... It took some time to get back up, but eventually it did get back up. Um, so we look. The street ratings say buy, right? Look at this. This is all over the board. One says sell, one says buy, one says hold, all right? So what's happened in the news? Um, their earnings report, 34 versus an estimated of 35. They came in pretty close. Um, they were pretty close to their uh, earnings estimate. So. <clears throat> That's a good earnings report. 
for them, right? But we got no other news. We got, we've got no negative news. We've got no positive news. We've got nothing here. So that is probably unnatural. That is probably unnatural, and this will probably creep back up over the next week. Okay? So I like to look at those that are losing because the ones that are losing value, if there's no specific reason for them to be losing it, his K-12, uh, this is learning, um, education, LRN. I think I knew of them before. LRN, K-12. So, again, fairly consistent uh, along the three-day. Dropped 20.14%. Whoa. Okay. So along six months, along six months, we see a lot of volatility with this stock, right? Um, this is kind of all over the place. Uh, let's look at what this company, what they say. Okay. Hold and hold. National Bullying Prevention Month. New poll shows online schools provide safe haven for bullying victims. K-12 big data team wins Baltimore Orioles hackathon, okay? So this is an educational um, organization that, that's kind of doing some things. They're making some noise, right? Okay. Um, first quarter uh, revenues, their reports, and they dropped, okay? They dropped from, let's look at this. They dropped from $14 to 12 in a day, right? So why? Why? So now we look back over one month. Consistently over the last 30 days, they were at this $14 level. What does this mean to anybody? Anybody looking at this? What does this say to you? Anyone? What conclusion can you draw based on what you're seeing there? It'll go back up. It should go back up. It should normalize. If this is consistently that place where they dance, and this just happened, it is probably not due to anything that they did. Now, again, research it. Research this company. See if you believe in them. I mean, this could be the K-12. K-12 could be the Clan 12. Just be careful, right? Research them. Dig into them, see, and, and, and kind of figure out what's going on with them. But as far as I can see on a cursory glance, there's probably no reason for this to have happened. And it went straight down. They just got caught in market jitters. So by Monday, my expectation is that $12 at $11.50 should turn back into $14, and you will have made $2 per share. Okay. And then what I would do is dump it. And I'll do that. Look, go into when when you do this, okay, okay. When you do this, go into it with a full expectation. Good question. What makes a share split? Um, I'll give me one second. Go into it with a full expectation to to make twenty dollars a week. Determine in your mind that you're gonna make twenty dollars a week out of this damn market, and don't go home until you can. Okay, And I promise you, you can. Play with small money and watch the trends. Watch the, the, um, the indication, right? Watch the, these indicators. Watch the market jitters. And if you see something that happens that was abnormal, right, there's really no reason. You see some consistency in that company over the last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. You see no reason for this to have taken this drop. Well, I'll tell you what. It's a safe assumption that it's probably going to go back up. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, uh, so the question was, what makes a share split? Okay. A split happens when a company has run out of shares or when they need to make more shares available publicly. Oftentimes they do this when they want to raise more money as well, right? 
When they want to make more money, they want to make more shares available so that investors can buy those and they increase the value of that company. Okay? So what they'll do is imagine if you had um, 500, so you, you got 100 shares, right? What you're going to do is, um, and you've got 50 shares in play, right? 50 of those shares are owned and 50 are not owned. So what you do is you go to the, um, they go to the um, stock market, the exchange, and they say, okay, we need to create more shares. So they, um, they take those remaining 50, okay, and they split them and turn them into 100. What it does is it puts twice the amount of shares into the market, and the people that had previously owned those shares, the value of their shares um, went down by half, but they now have twice as many. I know that sounds confusing, but basically, um, uh, basically, they come out to the good in a split. In a split, you generally will come out to the good. Okay. Um, and Kev asked, if we sell dump when it's high with the intention of reinvesting, are we taxed on the gains, or is there a period of time we have to make a decision? Um, yeah, you're taxed on the gains. Yeah, you're taxed on the gains. Doesn't matter. If you leave that money, so you put your money into share builder, right? And you haven't bought anything yet. It's just sitting in, 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 the, in the field of play. Okay. If you've not made anything or gained anything, that's your money. You ain't going to pay no taxes on it, right? If you make some money, oh, well, yeah, the pimp hand is strong, you know. Um, uh, uh, Kev said he needs access code. Let me see. Access code is 735. One five five nine three eight. Okay. Um, so my guess is he didn't hear that. Um, if you dump, if you gain um, on your investments, you will get taxed. Okay. The, que the answer to your question, Kev, if you dump or sell taxes. When it's high and you make a gain, you will absolutely get taxed on those gains. Okay? You will absolutely get taxed on those gains. All right. Now, uh, let's see. So, okay, so we've looked at these stocks. Okay? Um, the other thing that I wanted to quickly show you is the IPOs. I am going to go through in a, a more in-depth capacity and show you everything, the EFTs, mutual funds, bond funds. I do want to talk about metals. Um, furthermore, I would love to develop a, um, I would love to develop a workshop designed for children so that we can also create some games for them so that they can be involved in this market. They can start to watch and trend and see how these things work and see how money is made and maybe make some little games out of it so that the kids get involved and, and have some fun. Um, and we kind of change the cycle so that they're involved in this out of the gate, um, bearing in mind that um, the uh, other groups in America, their children have made trades um, before they ever leave the home. Um, they're, they're, um, they're out there uh, and playing with the stock market prior to uh, ever leaving. So we need to get our children acclimated as well. We need to be versed and literate in it as well. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that's a very important uh, element. Uh, no, that's the only code. Okay, so IPOs, initial public offerings, right? Initial public offerings. This is a company that has not yet gone public, okay? When 
they when they're looking when they do an initial public offering basically what they're looking to do is make money they're making these shares available you can buy in to their company you believe in what they're doing you think they're going to be successful and so you buy in thinking that the shares are going to be reflective of their success okay so when they do a initial public offering they're trying to make money they've gone public they're going to adhere to a certain stand um a set of guiding and governing principles a public company um, has to fall under um, and they're going to try to make money and, and, and be a viable organization. Okay, well, based on a number of different factors, those stocks will be valued. They will be, um, their uh, relative value will be created and they'll place a value that says when this stock opens up on Friday, we expect it to open up at $13, okay? It's a pharmaceutical company, okay? You can do some research on Roth Pharmaceuticals, um, and I looked it up a little bit. It actually happens to be right here in Cambridge, um, where I grew up. Uh, and it's a small company, small pharmaceutical company. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're in an interesting market, but my guess is, that they're not going to skyrocket Friday. I could be completely wrong. Pharmaceuticals are very valuable stocks. Okay, so it's quite possible that raw pharmaceuticals opens up at thirteen dollars and immediately jumps to twenty-six, which turns into a money double. Right? Again, there is risk associated with trying to do that. You'll note that you cannot purchase this because it is not public yet. Once you find a company that is public, you can then determine to purchase it. Do a lookup. Again, you need to be logged into your account. You'll do a lookup. You'll find it, and you will choose to trade. When you trade, you can purchase as many of them as you want. In this case, this is not going to be a limit. It's going to be market price. Set your price, and you buy your shares. Okay. Any questions? So, um, so I want to show you something else. Okay. Um, and and this is it, it goes a little deeper than I think we can in this session. But what I am going to do is I'm going to encourage you to find the room that I created, the group. I say. Um, that is uh, A-S-E. Uh, I don't think it's secret. Um, so if you find that room, request access. Okay. Um, request access into the uh, ASE. And what we'll do is, we'll do this, like I say, maybe bi-monthly. Okay. And that'll give me more time to, um, it, that'll give me more time to kind of show you some of the various uh, methods in which you vet um, stocks, look at what are those things that would affect the value of a stock and like that, okay? Um, uh, and I'll try to, well, I'll take a look over in uh, Kitco. I'll show you some meadows, okay? Um, Forex market, again, great great area. All of these uh, markets are phenomenal. All of these markets are phenomenal. It's just a matter of being able to read the data. That's the key, right? Again, these people are making hundreds of millions of dollars. They're, looking, they're not looking at different data than you, right? They're not looking at different data than you. They're, they're looking at the same data. They're looking at the same public information, and they're making educated deci uh, the decisions and choices based on that. Now, they've got more experience than we do, right? but they're looking at the same data. So what it behooves us to do is to look at it for ourselves, get into it. This is a great tool. You'll find that again, um, they've got education centers and really anything that you need to know, you can, okay? You can find it out. So I'm gonna show you um, another way that I look at these, okay? And that is to look at charts. 
Okay. This is to look at the charts of their performance. Okay. Now, the way that these work, okay, is you will choose <coughs> what you want to see as it relates to technical indicators. Okay. So here I'm going to choose, and again, we'll get, we'll go further into this as time goes on. We're going to choose a simple moving average. Okay. Um, then in the momentum, I'm going to choose Bollinger Bands. And what these are is different um, indicators that will show you kind of the, uh, the, the action um, in the market historically. And, um, and so let me, let me just um, select these. I'll do the MACD. And that's it. Okay. And now when I hit view, it's going to populate it with those various bands that I created. Okay. So now, um, what this uh, what this band indicates? This is an inverse chart. Okay. Um, and so, uh, the lower is actually the better in this inverse chart. So what you see, the these green indicators that I'm following along speak to the potential range of gain or loss based on those indicators, the amount of swing expected based on those indicators. So with the NHTC, this could go anywhere from 20 to 31 $32 within the span of a day. Okay. So uh, let me, uh, excuse me, let me break that back to a day. Okay. So no, now notice that. Okay, look at that. When I was on a year, right, I was on a one year, okay, and the sway in that one year was in between that 20 to $30 range. That was a $10, uh, 10 $11 amount of sway predicted. And look at it. It's pretty consistent throughout that year. Right now, if we switch this to a one day, look at it. There is the range of fluctuation that you can potentially expect for that stock in a day. How much are you going to make? Not much, not much, right? That's the range. And if you look again, it's been pretty consistent, right? If we look back. Um, throughout the day, that's been consistent. If we look back past 10 days, those bands have been consistent, right? The range that this indicator speaks to has been pretty consistent as it relates to how much that will swing, okay? So let's look at, um, let's look at the marijuana stock in the same, using the technical indicators, okay? So using the, we go to the charts, there are my indicators, and there's the swing. Okay, so that swing says it's going to be anywhere between 11 cents and 12 cents. Okay, look at the swing here. Look at that. The, this, was, this was predicted. This was basically predicted. Thank you. If you look at that swing, it said in between these two days, from in between 8 and 13, 14 was the potential game? Uh, who was that? <laughs> Got to have somebody uh, mute. Who's that? Okay. Um, the potential gain was predicted here, right? Look at all of these indicators. The simple moving average. We knew this. This. This kind of. This was expected, and it is to be expected. This marijuana is not going anywhere. Okay, it is not going anywhere. So um, again, the technical indicators are just additional methods of looking at the same data to try to make an educated determination um, to as it relates to you know what is going to happen in the future. I'm really again, as I said, uh, and you've seen, I'm really comfortable with the marijuana. 
Um, as you see, it's steadily proven to be um, proven to be a performer. Okay. Uh, mutual funds are a a, a means of kind of stabilizing what you're going to make. In the area of these stocks, you see this fluctuation? Yeah, you can lose a lot of money really, really fast. A mutual fund puts money into, a, in, into an industry or a company in which um, they're stable. They're not going anywhere. You're looking at their stocks and their stocks perform you know, with a 2% um, margin, profit margin per year, a 3%. So a mutual fund allows you to say, okay, I'm going to buy this, and in 20 years, I should come out with around the area of a 20% return on my money, right? And after 50 years, I should come out with um, this kind of a return on this amount of money. So it's a sta more stable um, solution. It's a more long-term solution. It is to build stability into the market. The thing that's happened is that the stock market, since the dot-com uh, burst, became a lottery. Again, the way, that, the way that it used to work is people would put their money in there for 20 years, 30 years, and they would live on the interest. Okay? They would make money. They would, put their, they would, they would have um, um, New England Telephone stock or um, Ma Bell stock. They would have Microsoft stock or something like that, and they wouldn't sell any of it. They would live on the interest, okay? Um, but this money would stay in the stock market and increase the stability of the overall exchange, okay? During the dot-com um, during the dot-com era, people were being made millionaires overnight because you had these small software companies that were coming out of nowhere, and suddenly they would open up at $13 and jump up quickly to $150, $200. So people that got those stocks would get that money, pull it out of the market, and they'd be rich. Okay? And this turned the stock market into a shooting gallery because now nobody was putting their money in there for 20 years, for 50 years any longer. They were going in for the quick hits, trying to get rich and get the hell out. You see? And so it's a different market than what it was 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Now it's a market where it actually is, it supports you coming in, doing your research, taking a quick hit, and walking away with $100,000 real fast. Okay? It supports that at this, at this point, whereas before it wasn't so supportive of that. And that's kind of why I focus on the stock. Because there's nothing that's going to give you as fast as a return um, and as dramatic as a return as these can now. Now, again, I'm looking at the options because the options are absolutely amazing. Options allow you to, um, options allow you to not actually dedicate your money. Um, you have the ability to say, okay, I want to. So let me, let me kind of explain to you what the options are. And, it, and option trading... It's definitely something that um, that I intend to jump into uh, shortly. Okay. So um, an option is a contract that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date. Okay. An option. Just like a stock or a bond is a security, it also has a binding contract with strictly defined terms and properties. Okay? The idea behind an option is to present in many everyday situations, um, is present in, in many everyday situations. So say, for example, that you discover a house that you'd love to purchase. Unfortunately, you won't have the cash to buy it for another three months. So you talk to the owner and you negotiate a deal that gives you an option to buy the house in three months for a price of $200,000. The owner agrees, but for this option, you're going to pay $3,000. You're going to pay him three grand to have that 
option for three months to buy that $200,000 house, okay? So imagine, okay, if you, you wanted to buy that house for $200,000. Here's the kind of scenarios that can happen. It's discovered that the house is actually the true birthplace of Elvis, right? And as a result, the market value of the house skyrockets to $1 million. Because the owner sold you the option, he's obligated to sell you the house for the $200,000 that you agreed to. In the end, you stand to make a profit of $797,000, okay? Another scenario. While touring the house, you discover that not only are the walls chock full of asbestos, but also the ghost of Henry VIII haunts the master bedroom. Furthermore, a family of super intelligent rats have run a fortress in the basement. So the, you thought you originally found your dream home, but now you consider that worthless. On the upside, you bought an option. You are under no obligation to go through with the sale, but you still owe the $3,000. You got it? You don't have to buy it, but you still own this, owe the $3,000 for the option. Okay? So options are a really nice way to get in this market without actually having to spend an awful lot of money. I'm not currently an option trader. It's something that I am going to probably jump into. I don't know, and, I, and I'll probably do that by the time we uh, meet again. Um, I don't know what the upfront cost is or any really of the particulars. I know how it works. I simply haven't done it. I've been focused completely on the, um, on the stock market and the marijuana, which is the fastest um, in. Now, someone asked about metals. Metals are also very, very interesting. Um, metals are traded very similarly to the way that um, stocks are. There is a relative value placed on gold, on ounces of gold, on grams of gold, on silver, on palladium. Um, there is a relative value, and you can trade them the same way. You can come to this site, kitco.com, okay, and you can open up an account. Now, it's a pain in the butt with Kitco because they need you to Western Union them the money, okay? You can't do it with a PayPal. You can't do it with your bank account. You've got to Western Union Kitco the money, but, okay, um, and, and that is to open up a trading account. If you want to open a trading account with Kitco, you've got to Western Union them the money. Otherwise, you could simply make a purchase of raw silver or gold. Okay? You can make a purchase of that and buy ounces of raw silver or gold. Now, what we look at is the, um, the opening and the ending price. So let's look at the gold, 24-hour gold chart. Okay? And so... Today, uh, it closed at 1273. What did it open? It opened at 1265, closed at 1273. Modest gains. I mean, that's actually pretty significant there as it relates to gold. Um, note, if you will, that um, at about 10 a.m., it was at its high point, which was 1274, and it dropped down to about 1266. So gold lost in relative value. Here's what's interesting, okay, as it relates to metals. For the most part, there is a fixed relative value between gold and silver. So if, uh, hypothetically, if gold is $100, and silver is 50, if gold jumps up to 120, generally silver will jump up to 70 to accommodate that value. And they kind of follow a pattern where the relative value between them is pretty static. Okay? So when you see gold go down in value, you can generally count on a dip in the silver, OK? 
okay? And where you see the gold go up, you can see a, a, a rise in that silver as well. It's not one for one, it doesn't happen immediately, but generally speaking, <coughs> they will normalize and kind of correct themselves in the marketplace, okay? Silver is the place that I really uh, kind of like to play in. Um, and uh, so uh, the wife is just showing me uh, a few of the um, silver. Wow, those are heavy. Um, should I, uh, let me see if I can uh, share my camera. Um, <coughs> so I'll share out uh, my screen. So we tend to buy silver. Um, it's a good investment. Right, and these are um, uh, these are one ounces. Yeah, one ounce. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. These are ten ounce bars of silver. These are ten ounce bars of silver. And so the same way now with Kitco, like I said, you can um, you can either buy um, and you can either buy the raw material. You can buy the bars. Or you can buy a trading account so that you don't actually have to hold the physical bars. I kind of know what's coming. And based on that, I know that there is going to be a new currency of the day. Um, and so uh, I prefer to have some of those on hand so that if barter must happen, I do have currency that will be accepted anywhere on earth. Um, but it is also good to have a trading account where you can buy and sell in real time, right? In real time, being able to capitalize on market fluctuations. There's some value to that, okay? Any questions? Um, I kind of went a little over. What is Bitcoin? That is a great question. Bitcoin is a digital currency. And in fact, in this regard, I think probably one of the most qualified to kind of tell you what Bitcoin is would be Jelani. Um, he's been watching it. He's been kind of on top of it since day one. Um, Jelani, you mind jumping in and kind of explaining from your perspective what Bitcoin is and, and how that works? Okay, um, sure. I'd essentially of it particular kind of the Oh you breaking up. You uh -huh. breaking up, man. Just like back in class, man. <laughs> you plug my headset in. Okay. <laughs> we done had this problem with Jelani before. You know, he don't he don't <laughs> Um, and I, I will say that uh, kind of the Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency, um, uh, here's the problem. Here's the problem, Kim. And so Kim asked um, for me to add everyone to, the, uh, to her to the ASE group, and I would love to do so. The problem is, do you know how many people, as soon as I say, okay, who wants to be added? Do you know? How many, so maybe I need to just open it up for a minute and... Um, and make it public so that you all can find it because you, you're trying to give me a full-time job over here. You know how many people will, will suddenly hit me up and say, okay, I want to be in. Do you, do you know how many people hit me up? I, because again, this is kind of impromptu, right? Somebody said, I need to know more. So I said, yeah, okay, we'll do a little workshop tomorrow night and everybody can come in. For the love of sweet baby Jesus, do you know how many people hit me up it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And you know what? I want to, hey, I want to make that available. I love that. I, so uh, I want to make available to them this information so that they can use it. I say it's spelled A-S-E, correct, African Stock Exchange. Um, it's a secret group. I will, um, I'll make it public and you all will be able to find it once we are done with this session. Okay. Uh, and I will disseminate some more information in there. Furthermore, okay, um, I think that what's going to happen is this will be the first 
of many of these kinds of workshops. You now have something of a foundation. You know how to come into Share Builder. Okay? You'll go to Accounts. Uh, when you come in, you can just start doing some searches. Now, I'll tell you, there's a, co a coffee company, Jam and Java. I've been watching them for a while. Um, and again, volatile. You see this activity over the, the three days? Volatile. But i got to tell you, you'd be amazed because when you get, so when it goes from 0 0.1, so that's one cent, right? When it goes from one cent to two cents, what does that mean? What just happened? If it goes from one cent to two cents, that's a money double. So if you had $100 in there, that just turned into $200. So the fact that it's a small amount, the fact that it's a penny, don't let that fool you. Money double is money double. Okay? So if you had $1,000 in there and it went from one cent to two cents, you just made $1,000. That's 100% profit. Okay? So, um, again, it, it, it behooves you to know how to move around, to know how to see the trends, right, and what's going on. Ooh, they tumbled, didn't they? Look at that. They was riding the wave up there. Yeah. And now look at them. They're struggling. They did get into um, some of the major, um, they did get into some of the major retailers uh, in the last year. So I expected to see them do something. Um, but again, as you see, that's way, way down. I also made a fine profit on uh, Boot. Uh, Boot came out, and I think they came out at about $18. Um, and I rode them, I rode them to a high point. I rode them to their high point, you know, uh, around 15, uh, I guess 15 bucks. Um, nope, there it is. There's that high point. Um, I rode them to the high point of $30, dumped them, and then they started to tank and went back down. So, um... you will be taxed every year. Same way if you went to the casino, Kev, and, you know, you won $10,000, they're going to report that, and at the end of the year, you're going to have to claim it. Okay. This makes it easy because um, if you go to accounts here, there's your tax center, and your gains and losses are already accounted for um, in the tool. So it makes it very easy for you to manage that. Um, but, yeah, you're going to pay taxes on anything you gain. Okay? It's not going to happen now. It will happen at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, you've got a foundation. You've got a basis to begin. Okay? Um, next time, next session, we'll spend some time in the EFTs, the mutual funds, the bonds, and the options. Okay, we'll go through the rest of those. What I wanted to do was kind of get you all started. So if you decided that you wanted to begin trading and buy some of these um, marijuana stocks, I would suggest, you know, open up your account tomorrow and immediately jump on them. They are, in fact, going to do everything that we think they will come November when 26 states vote them legal. Okay, it is going to be a gold mine. So in that regard, I love the marijuana stocks. Um, uh, can I grow hemp? Do a search. I'll share a, a listing of, of some of the best marijuana stocks that are out there. So, yeah, there you go, Antonio. I got you covered. Um, I'll share a listing of some of the best ones that are out there. Um, and I'm going to suggest that you do your own research. Okay. I'm going to open up the Ase group so it'll be public. Look for it within the next half an hour or so. And once you look for it and you can find it, then you will be able to add yourself. Um, that is the group. And again, when we're talking about pooling money, and I say there's a bunch of other initiatives, which is why I didn't really, um, I haven't spent as much time in I say as I should have. Um, because again, I'm working on a real, uh, a rather large hemp initiative. I'm working on a bunch of different things. Um, so, but I think it's rather important that we kind of push along this learning. So what I'll commit to doing is, again, maybe a bi-monthly 
uh, workshop. Again, it's got to be random. 25 people are going to be able to come in. So um, I'll, I'll drop an invitation. First 25 to jump up and say, yo, I want in. You'll be in. And then I'll share the recording with everybody else, and you can ask questions, you know, based on that. But I suggest that each of us uh, get into that group, research stocks. Uh, no, Kev, only you can't hear me. <laughs> um, I suggest that everybody jump into um, jump into this game, research these stocks, um, and bring it to the room, right? Bring it to the room and say, I'm looking at this. The reason that I like this is because of X, Y, Z. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. Tell me, somebody tell me I'm right. Let's bring this kind of information out. Let's discuss it. Let's be um, clear and make moves together that will benefit us. So, yes, when we, we can go into, I'm going to add, uh, make, I say, public, everybody can add. When we talk about pooling money, we're talking about pooling like no money. One dollar, five dollars. We'll put it in there and we'll play with it. We'll choose what to buy. We'll watch what happens. We'll lose. We'll win. Whatever it is. Okay? Um, but so let's, we're, we're going to move forward on that. Furthermore, I spoke about an initiative where we create a program for the children. Okay? Where we can create some games so that the children, too, are looking at the same stock market, and they're making predictions as to what something is going to do based on the criteria that you will share with them. And we'll turn it into a fun game, right? And we'll get them involved very early. So by the time they're 18, they've already made some trades. Understand, nobody works for a million dollars. Nobody earns a million dollars. You can't go into a job and do anything that for eight hours is going to pay you a million dollars. No one does that. No one makes that much money an hour, okay? It's not earned, it's taken, it's taken. You go into this market, you take it. You play the tax game and you take it. Nobody earns that kind of money. Not one immigrant in 400 years came in and earned what they have. They played the game, they played taxes. They got businesses. They wrote off their cars. They wrote off their gas, their clothes, their food, their entertainment, their travel. This is how they got to where they got. So we have to play this game, right? We have to play this game. So hopefully this has been a helpful foray. We are, we'll do this again. I'll schedule it um, uh, for two weeks out. Um, and uh, I encourage you to get your accounts set up to get in there, look at some of the hemp stocks. Um, some of this has been done for you because I can tell you, you see my money is down. Um, you can see that I'm on the MJNA. You can see that I'm on the hemp. I'm on the canna grow. I'm on all of those mar marijuana stocks that are, um, that are movers based on the indicators that I showed you. You're going to pan out and look at that. I'm on a three-day, five-day, one month, three month, one year. See what they're doing. See the news. What's going on with that stock, right? Is there anything that's going on? Is there anything that's affecting it? Furthermore, look at the, um, when you get aggressive, look at the um, unusual volume. I'll share this. Unusual volume. And look at the things that are down. See how much they've dropped. See if you can sneak in and grab a stock that just dropped $20 and put you at an affordable place, and guess what? When it bounces back up, pull your $20 out plus, plus 20. And so you make $20 for the week. That's fine. That is fine. Make $20 for the week. Make $30 for the week. That's fine. Use these tools and gain, and gain, okay? All right. My beloved, we're going to do it again. Like I said, Two weeks from now, we'll have another workshop. Hopefully, you all have, will have gotten on. You've made a purchase, and, um, and you'll have new questions um, related to it. We're going to cover some new data. That time, we'll take new ground uh, and grow forward. All right? My beloved, it's been my pleasure. I'm going to share this recording openly.
Um, you will be able to get a copy. You can share it with your people so that we can kind of push this knowledge forward. All right. Appreciate you, Brother Pete. Family, peace. Peace, fam. Yes, sir. Peter. Oh, yeah. Are you still there? I'm still here. Okay, I didn't think you could hear me at all. I've been saying things throughout the night. Um, what do you think the possibility is of getting a group together to make a big purchase? That's uh, the assay. Look for that. Uh, I'm going to open it up within a half an hour. I've already okay. got the group built. I've got the framework in place. We can absolutely do that. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to get you in there, man. Yeah, man, I'll be in. All right. Thanks for what you do, man. Love you. You Love you too, brother. Peace. Please. Will it be easy to find, Peter, when you open yes. it up? Yes, it will. It's just I, uh, I say you'll do a Facebook search for the group. Yeah, because there's a couple of I say groups in there, so I was just wondering. I'll create a post and put a link to it once I got it open for you. All right. Thanks, brother. Have a good night. Absolutely. You have a wonderful night, sister. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Peace out. All right, family. Speak to you soon. Hello. Hi, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Oh, I asked about you this morning. You were still sleeping. Yeah. Uh, so what are you doing? You, you, you're working on it now? Oh, well, that's good. I know it's going to take time. That's, it takes a long time to do things. A long time ago, I used to do my 